Lord Harwood has been a Leeds United fan for 70 years. My father took me uh, just before I was 10, about a couple of months before my 10th birthday, and we went just, uh, just before New Year's Day 1932-33 to Leeds and Arsenal at Ellen Road, and I was hooked. I thought that was great. Very good players, but I didn't know that at the time. I knew the names. People like Wilf Copping, of course, was playing for Leeds then, um, and Willis Edwards. Willis Edwards was the first foot Leeds football, I think, uh, for whom I developed a fan-like uh, interest. <laughs> Lord Harwood became president of Leeds United just before Don Reavy began building the legendary team of the 1960s and 1970s. It was a time when players didn't want to leave. I don't remember anyone that Don picked in his first, what would you say, 15. Um, in the squad, as it were, who ever left to go to another club to better themselves. They left if they were left out, and one longed for them to do better uh, in, when they were somewhere else, because it was satisfaction. Um, but now people move about much more, much more quickly and more easily, and more, I'm going to say, cynically. For Leeds United, these are survival rather than glory days. Although secure in the Premiership, the club still has debts totaling £80 million. Pounds and it's had to sell many of its best players. Any chairman wants the team, therefore the club, to do well in the competitive thing of the league and so on, and the possibility of again getting into the Champions League European thing. Um, and you can't do that by selling all your players. It's also very difficult to uh, relieve your debts without doing something like that. It's a very tricky situation. So you missed the go, but you missed it. I heard it on the radio. You did. I think I exercise a presidential role. Wouldn't <coughs> wouldn't stop me expressing, shall we call it, prospective disappointments if certain certain transactions took place. <laughs> Was that what you did before Woodgate went then? Yeah. I suppose yes. That was the great disappointment to me. To begin with, he was a, a fine player. And secondly, I thought he was rapidly getting into a situation of being able to uh, be able to replace Rio Ferdinand as the, the backbone of the of the defence, and you need that. Have you not missed a game at all? Uh, I have, yes, I've yes. missed Cup. one or two cup games. He's <laughs> remarkably knowledgeable about the game, and so we're always taking his advice. And uh, it's fantastic to have such a supporter with us all the time. I remain an optimist. I remain. Uh, what my friend Peter Ridsdale called a dreamer. To Lord Harwood, football and opera are the reverse sides of the same coin. It all makes perfect sense. I see it in the, in the sheer endeavour, and not least the physical endeavour, which uh, obviously a footballer has to do, let's, let's talk about a striker, uh, has to do, uh, timing it right and heading the ball and achieving a goal, and the effort is the product of uh, rehearsal, of uh, coaching, of working, of getting it absolutely right. A singer has learnt how the thing goes, and now has rehearsed it, uh, and gets it by a physical instinct. And I think that physical instinct, not least, let's say, in Italian opera, is not 100% unlike the striker's instinct to score. <laughs> No, no regrets.